Well guys, it's time for Toyota Tundra part two. So if you remember, I'll wrap up last video. I bought the Tundra for $1,800 non-running and then I towed it to the dealership because the dealership quoted me only $725 to do the timing belt, which is an extremely good deal. And they were gonna use my own customer supplied parts. Uh, my experience with dealerships has never been great. So I figured this one, uh, I could give this dealership a try uh, because they quoted me a really good deal. So I figured, hey, let's see how it is. Unfortunately, my experience with this dealership is pretty much the same as my experience with all other dealerships. Uh, this was White River Toyota, but if you remember, they quoted me 725 to do the timing belt, but let's head on down there to see what that quote turned into. I'll show you the invoice, but you'll be surprised. So let's load up and head down to White River Toyota. So there's the truck here at the Toyota dealership. Go pay for it and uh, see if it starts. Well, I'm gonna keep you in suspense for how much it costs for a minute or two more, but she's all paid for. I've got the key here. Come on, big mama. <laughs> Listen to that. Here we go. Sounds good. Now we got a bunch of things to test. Does the AC work? Does the radio work? Remember, I had never had this thing running. <laughs> Does it shift? <laughs> Looks like uh, I would guess that the temp the coolant temp sensor is not going to work, and obviously the the oil pressure doesn't work no more. But she's running good. Let's put her into drive. She moves. We got her on the interstate. I'm only doing 40. Oh, why am I only doing 40? I guess I wasn't paying attention. And I was just sitting behind this here camper. But the temp gauge actually does work. Let's feel the AC. The AC might, the AC is pretty weak, but I think it is cold. She's got a little bit of kick to her. I'm speeding up to pass this here RV. Oh, yeah. She got OD overdrive. Heck yeah, all the gears are there. Let's get her up to 65, which is the speed limit. That's what I'm talking about. What a smooth ride. <laughs> nice truck. Got her on cruise control now too, and it works. Everything in this truck works. Even the, the AC is not super cold, like I said, but it does work. And it's smooth. It's got the brand new steering rack, which must've paid about 800 bucks for, because I've done a steering rack on these before, and I, I believe it was uh, 10 hours or eight hours in labor or something crazy and he, I don't think he did it himself. So, yeah, wow. Well, as you can see, truck made it home great. So now it is the moment you've been waiting for. So I'm sure everybody wants to know how much did I pay for this? Remember I was quoted at $725 just to do the timing belt and everything. Well, I got the, the slip right here. Let's read it read it to you if you're interested if not just skip forward like 30 seconds and i'll tell you the price starts here found several boats that are broken and are going to require extra time effort for extraction serpentine belt tensioner is seized to the motor and will likely break during removal requiring replacement case of the alternator is cracked and lower bolt broken off vehicle arrived with radiator in bed of truck unsure of condition of radiator and suspect it might need replacement replace timing belt and water pump per customer request Serpentine belt tensioner assembly broke during removal as expected and was replaced per customer authority. Performed bolt extraction drilling tapping for the two broken bolts filled with new coolant. Alternator had to be replaced per customer authority as or authorization as original one with the cracked case was actually seized. Radiator seems to be holding coolant but does have a broken bolt mounting to the flange. Truck ran very poorly after timing belt replacement. Once it warmed up, it would not even idle. All cylinders misfiring, but it seemed as though the major misfires were on cylinder three and five. Swapped ignition coils and spark plugs around did not seem to make a difference on the misfire. Check compression on cylinder five, got 145 PSI, which is great. Checked fuel pressure and found to be in spec and 45 PSI. Took fuel sample and found the fuel was very contaminated, likely water, but unsure at this time. Next page. Drain the tank as much as possible with the fuel pump. I don't know what that means. 
Put in five gallons of fresh fuel and a bottle of fuel treatment, we were then able to get the engine running smoothly and no misfire showing on scan tool. With truck running well, we were able to get cooling system bled out and blowing heat. Unsure where the fuel contamination came from. Possible there's a leak from top of tank, although no such issue is detected. So, who knows? <laughs> All right. Now let's show you the price. Dun, 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 what is that? That's quadruple what the original quote was. Yeehaw! So all that extra labor um, and some of the price was they had to replace the alternator, as you heard, because the alternator was seized. And some of the bolts required a bunch of uh, extraction and whatnot. Um, I wouldn't have minded, you know, a little bit going over the expected. I was prepared. I was fully prepared to pay $2,000, but... 3,000 seems a little high. Of course I did pay it anyway because they did the work and uh, what are you gonna do, it runs. But anyway, as, as the service thing said, after they replaced the timing belt, it still was misfiring because it had bad fuel in it. So it is totally possible and probable that I didn't need to, or I didn't need to do the timing belt replacement. Uh, but the previous guy said there was 90,000 miles on the timing belt, so there's time to do it anyway. And you can see the timing belt, 187K now. And now the next owner won't have to worry about it for several years. So <laughs> a little lost for me, but good for the next guy. Probably the main source of the misfire was actually just the contaminated fuel. So I could have, in a ideal world, where I had done a little more troubleshooting beforehand and wasn't in such a hurry, just drained the tank, refilled it with good gas and had a tundra running this well with just like 50 bucks worth of gas or whatever. Instead, I'm $3,000 into it. <laughs> Life goes on. So total, I bought the truck for 1,800. I spent 3,067 in repairs. So we're 48, 4,900 into it. Let's add a hundred bucks for the cost of picking it up. So I'm probably $5,000 into this Toyota Tundra. Thing is, it is, I'm probably gonna list it for 7,500 or 7,000 because of the condition it's in and because of what truck values are right now. So despite having spent that, I still will be all right. I still will come out all right. There's one more thing I have to do to it. Um, the frame is in excellent shape and it's got the new exhaust all the way to the front, but the technician noted that it needs one patch at the front of the frame. So I'm going to do that. Unfortunately, yes, there is one little patch that it needs right here. Weirdest spot to rust, but it's like, what? frame looks like it's in perfect shape and then suddenly but damn there's just a, a hole right there so I don't know how that and the other side's fine I mean look at the other side the other side's perfect front cross member is perfect the rest of the frame is perfect it's just right there but we'll patch that with thick grade metal and I'll show you that and then this truck will be ready to send down the road so it's time to do that fabrication um, if you'll notice, this is the Audi here. You can see I still have it because actually I'm keeping it. It's an all wheel drive, sporty fun car. That's only $1,700 and uh, it runs perfectly and drives perfectly. So no reason for me to sell it. Let's see if this starts. Where did I put the key? Yes, it does. All right, let's drive it over to the garage. So I put her up on ramps and you can see, I mean, the whole underside that, you know, even the inner rocker panel, frame rail, cross member, everything is great. And then there's the whole new exhaust. Oh, it's not all the way. I guess it's from the cat back, exhaust from the cat back at least though. That's still pretty good though. It includes the resonator and the muffler. And this side is perfect too up here. It's just right here by the radiator support, or I guess by the front support. 
I guess it just didn't like right there, so. See if it's. started welding now. everybody so here is my the weld play as you can see it's over the hole sorry the sun is blocking it a little bit uh, but I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and paint over it and should be good here it is guys just painted it there it is under there I'm happy with it looks pretty good in there so there you have it, ladies and gents. I think that's gonna be it for this Tundra. So yeah, like I said, I'm about 5,000 into this truck total. I put it up on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist for 7,500 and I actually got a ton of bites immediately. A buyer's coming tonight. Hopefully I could sell it then. Um, that's gonna be the end of this series of the, of the Tundra. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next week.